everybody. So you can see we're in the garage with the Toyota and I've already talked about this, what we're going to do. So let's just start with it. New rear adjustable lower control arms. I'm tired of the camber eating away on my tires. I am not slammed or stanced or anything. I want a good handling car and I do not need all of this ridiculous camber. And the Ebox Sportline Springs are giving it to us. So these are the white line adjustable con or adjustable lower control arms. And first things first, as you will notice, they're actually SPC. So I'm assuming that white line has just used the bushings. And here's the bolts that will go in it. This looks pretty simple. I hear ice cream. Oh. So it looks pretty simple. So I did not show lifting this car in the air. Um, I put it on four jack stands, as you can see, they're all hanging low. I'm gonna pull the wheels and tires off of it front and back. I'm getting new tires put on this. I've got Federal 595s, they are 235-40s. I'm gonna be putting those on them and getting this thing back on the road with an alignment, new tires, and these adjustable lower control arms. So this car should be sitting quite a lot differently and be driving differently over the next few days. I'm actually taking the tires tonight to go and have a local car friend named Mark, thanks Mark, to mount and balance the tires on these things. And uh, he's gonna do it for me at Springdale Ford where he works, super nice guy who's working with me tonight. And I'm gonna actually try to film that a little bit because why well, wouldn't I? And now we're gonna be getting rid of these old Continentals uh, they've been good tire. They've been a great tire. And as you can see, uh, they have a lot of life left in them. And so you look at the back. And the front is a lot worse, like I showed in the other video. Uh, hold, bear with me here. I have to break you off of my... If that'll focus. And clearly it won't show the belts, because why would it work? Uh, I'm showing belts on the front, so we're getting... New tires, new adjustable lower control arms, and an alignment done on this. And I'm going to use the stock rear toe arms and pull out as much camber as we can before the toe gets out of out of whack and jacked up. I'm hoping I can get almost all of it out. Maybe have like a half a degree or a degree, and I'm okay with that. So, uh, like I said, uh, first things first, get the car in here done. Uh, get the wheels and tires off. Uh, well, for the back anyway. I'm going to pull all four of mine off. Like I said, I'm getting tires tonight. And uh, we're going to come back to this corner where we can see. And here is the passenger side lower control arm. So we have the, what is, would this be the knuckle? This, no. The rear hub assembly bolt. The strut slash coilover suspension bolt, whatever you want to call it. Whatever suspension you have on it. Mine are still struts. The rear sway bar bolt. And under there, way back up behind your here is the bolt that goes to the rear subframe. So I've already sprayed these with some uh, lubricant. <laughs> As you can see it's still dripping there and I've already sprayed the other side. Uh, these are all 17 millimeter except for the uh, sway bar end link which is a 14 millimeter. And I've got my half inch drive stuff out and uh, we're gonna see if we can get all these off real quick and get these changed without undue uh, stress, effort, work, cursing, etc. Subaru. That did not go as planned. But there it is. Yes, it got over there out of a fit of rage. So as you can see, a little bit more happened under here. Um the sway bar bolts had it twisted something fierce. And this last bolt that comes out of the bottom of the hub under here. Okay. This one? Hold on this one it has to be perfectly centered and aligned to come out of there otherwise it binds on itself this bolt will not come out of its hole if it's in a bind it just won't do it it twists the bushing around like this and it hits it's got to be aligned for that bolt to come out and I was really starting to have a bit of a panic like holy crap this thing's not going to come out of here I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. I'm going to have to cut something or grind something. I was getting really uh, 
bummed out. I uh, actually took the four 12 millimeter bolts off of the sway bar and it's only on there with two bolts right now just so I can get the other side off too. But th that was the hardest part. And not that it was hard, it really worried me because I was afraid something wasn't going to work. But everything came out as it's technically supposed to. Uh, I could have gone for a little bit more clearance under here. That didn't leave myself. However, it's out now and we can get the new SBC uh, lower control arm at least lined up and centered under here. And I believe we're going to try to set it as neutrally positioned as possible. I'm not going to try to pull camber or anything until I can get this car in alignment rack because it's going to destroy the 240 treadwear tires that I'm putting on this car. So, now that the OEM is out, we're going to line this up and I'm going to hang the first bolt under the subframe back there first. And I'm going to work my way back through here. The swing arm is going to be last and I will just make that work however I have to make that work. That's the most easily manipulative thing under here. It's going to be more difficult for me to make the uh, strut move, etc. I just changed my mind. I'm going to start the hub, put this bolt in first, then the strut, and then I'll line it up back there. So let me get this lined up and we'll go from there. So that's step one done. Step whatever done, doesn't matter. Uh, this side is all bolted back up and lined back up. So I've been trying to figure out, to, I want to see how all this stuff works. I believe I have that. I believe I have the adjustment washer in there correctly. It looks like it should be up, but it's hard to tell. Um, I mean, the numbers and everything are, are the correct, or I, I don't know. Uh, I believe it's on there the correct way, and I have it in a, a neutral setting. I have it just, you know, in the middle. Uh, these should be good for plus, plus or minus 2.5 degrees of camber. And I'm thinking they're going to have to be pulled almost all the way in to get rid of the camera that I have back here. But uh, anyway, this side is done, and I need to take a break and uh, put some stuff up. And we'll come back to this later tonight and get the other one moved over and tighten all this back up. And uh, get out your anti-seize, everybody, because we're going to be putting it back here. Well, we are here at Springdale Ford, and Mr. Mark's going to take care of us. Getting some new tires to put on the FRS. As we can see, and these are our 235s as opposed to the 225s. And uh, with the new lower control arms and these tires, we're going to try to bring it back sometime next week and get the alignment done on it. And uh, we should be good to go after that. And I can tell you already those tires fit better than the other ones did by a large margin. Big time. Okay, that is that one on. Now something important to note is you don't want to torque any of these down until you have the weight of the car sitting on it. So I've run everything up tight. As you can see, I have some anti-seize on everything. You know how much of a preacher I am for never seize. The only things I haven't put back on yet is the uh, clamps over the sway bar. I haven't finished putting those poles back in. I'm going to wait until everything else is on the other side. So when I struggle with the other side, I don't have to undo it again. So all we're going to do is, we're going to do the same thing on the other side as we just did here. Now I'm going to get some of my blocks. I'm going to jack the car up after I put the wheels and tires back on, which they've been done, as we already saw. And I'm going to put the wheels and tires back on and put some blocks under the tires, and I'm going to set the weight of the car on the blocks. And then I'm going to torque everything down. Hopefully later tonight, we're going to go back up and see Mark again. And he's going to align this car as much as we can and remove as much camber out of the back as we can without uh, messing up the toe too much. But we have the same type of adjustment for the toe arms up there as we do right here. It's the same type of mechanism. So let me get the other side on real quick and we'll go from there. And now the driver's side. LCA is on. Same thing as I did on the other side. Put anti-seize on all the bolts and bring everything up snug but do not torque anything down yet I'm gonna clean my tools and stuff what I don't need out from underneath the car I'm gonna get my uh, blocks right here and I'm going to put the tires back on the wheels and tires back on pick the car up a little bit and set it down on these blocks and torque everything down everything should be 50 foot pounds and as you can see I have the uh, camber adjustment set to neutral 
I don't want to go in or out yet until I get it on the rack. I don't want to mess with the toe. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, 50 foot pounds for everything. I believe the uh, sway bar bushing or the sway bar bolt is only, uh, I think it was like 25 or 30 or something. Uh, make sure you check that one. I believe it's 30. And that's where we're going to torque everything down to. 50 everywhere except for the uh, sway bar end link bolts. Those are 30. So let me get the wheels and tires on, clean up from underneath the car what we don't need, and get the blocks out, and jack the sig up, and set it down. Set back down under its own weight on my blocks and creaked and groaned and popped like I do when I get out of bed in the morning. But I double checked all the torque specs and they're actually all 59 foot pounds except for the sway bar end link which is 25 foot pounds. So now that's sitting under its own weight and I'm making sure that everything is in its neutral camber setting. Which is pretty close. We will We will torque all of these down to their weight and uh, hopefully we can get it on the rack and get everything finished tonight and it'll be back on the road driving. And I gotta say, it's not sitting the way it normally would and the camber will go away, but I'm really happy with this tire setup right now. We'll see how they wear. These tires don't quite seem to fill up the wheel well like they did, but I think it'll look different once it moves a little bit and the tires settle down and it's it's not sitting awkward because I just set the weight down of the car and didn't move it back and forth and let it roll a little bit. Plus the front of the car is still in the air so there's a lot of weight hanging up front. So it'll settle down a little bit more. But uh, let's get under the car and torque everything down and we'll go from there. Well here she is, she's sitting all on fours, rolled it back and forth a couple of times tires fill the wheel well nicely so I'm so happy with those you can see still got our nasty little camber there but uh, hopefully tonight we can get this thing up on Mark's rack and uh, get that taken care of big big finger crossed well we've got it up on the lift thankfully it fit and uh, just so you can see why we we're supposed to be getting the alignment done this is what happens to the toe when you start messing with the camber. So we're going to try to pull as much out of this as we can and see where we can get. So we got it aligned up as best as we could. A uh, big shocker, the claim for these is plus or minus 2.5 degrees. The best we could pull out was almost a degree. So we're going to get it aligned as best as we can and get the toe as close as we can. And it's, it did not hardly help the camber, hardly at all. So I would highly recommend if you're going to be doing a job like this and try to fix your camber, do toe control arms and upper control or toe arms and upper control arms and just roll with the stock lower control arms because this was over $200 worth to not correct what the purpose of buying them was for. This is as good as we got. Uh, oh my gosh. As you can see, this is what we set up uh, for the first time. Uh, this was after putting the LCAs on and just driving it up to the shop to get it put on the rack. And this was after we had adjusted the tow arms, the factory tow arms to their max and the adjustable LCAs to their max. And we could not pull out all the camber and as you could see the tow was, we couldn't get the tow in where it needed to be because of those parts. And we took it for a drive as you saw and it just we had to put it back on the rack and do it again because the car was all over the road. So this is what we ended up with and we got the front perfect, as near perfect as we can get without putting some camber bolts on the front. And the rear we got pretty close. Uh, all we're lacking is fixing some camber. Uh, we sacrificed a little bit more camber to get the toe in where it needed to be. And as you can see it's as good as we can get so far. I think the next step we're going to get a different set of LCAs, damn me, for buying the SPC white line toe, or the uh, control arms because they didn't have enough. So we're going to step up and get a set of uh, actual real adjustable ones where it's not just a, cam a uh, eccentric bolt to adjust it. We're going to get some of the turnbuckle where we can 
limitlessly adjust this so we can get everything fixed and we'll put on some adjustable tow arms. So let's go outside and see what the car looks like. So as you can see we've got enough camber out now where they almost stand straight up which is where we wanted to be and uh, we're not scrubbing tire too badly. Overall we're in a lot better shape than we were. It's just a shame that those LCAs didn't adjust plus or minus two and a half degrees like uh, the claims were for them. So we're going to be getting probably some Megan Racing or, or some other uh, not a top end brand but not some no name brand off eBay even though Megan Racing is not much better. And we're going to get some real LCAs on here where where we can get some real adjustability so that's uh, that's the setup now and that's what we're going to be running and hopefully we won't destroy this new pair of tires too quickly there we go <laughs> behind me you'll see a car